चाहिए बात Once and I gotta go ghost. She see I got power, now she do the most. And then that gangsters get mad, make a post. Bet you I win with my back is the road. Rocking off white, so she think I'm the boat. I jumped in the water. I knew I was. All right, here we are, new season. Let's go ahead and knock out the preseason. One of the more fun aspects of this game: recruiting board, registering players, depth chart, setting the schedule up for this season. I hope this is episode one, so to speak, of what is the national championship, fully rebuilt, complete. Georgia Tech Dynasty. Welcome back. Be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. If you missed our last episode, by the way, it was the offseason. We covered training results, uh, cutting players, transfers, all that kind of stuff. So please check that out if you missed it to keep up and keep up to date with the latest happenings on the Dynasty. Let's go. Quarterback, pretty easy decision here. James Nugent will redshirt the five-star freshman because we got Mike Butler, and we got Brian Moore and Dan Howard ready to go in case anything bad happens and hopefully nothing bad does happen. So Landon Smith will get shirted. Very talented freshman, but we have a lot of talented guys that have been waiting for their turn to play and contribute. So we're going to go seven deep at tight end. We'll go ahead and redshirt Joseph Scott because Lynch and Burgess are our starting two tight ends. And we rarely go two tight end sets, but when we do, those two can play. We don't need to have three. Let's go ahead and give Jeremy Henry a red shirt. Matt Ryan's going to hold it down to left tackle. I don't imagine he'll be playing, so save an extra year. Same as Steven Bradley. We will red shirt Brigham Edmonds. And last episode, I said we're going to bring Chris Carter back on the team. We had to cut him because of the stupid scholarship rule. I went in and I changed him to what he used to be, like his profile, and here he is right here. But he's at free safety, so he's got the numbers he needs to be a good defensive tackle. Um, but for whatever reason, I can't move him to D-tackle on the depth chart. He wasn't going to play this year anyway, so we're going to redshirt him now that I'm on the subject of it. And we'll, we'll fix him, you know, next offseason when the time comes or when he'll actually need to play. So that, that's kind of the deal with Chris Carter. That was a stupid situation to begin with. We're going to redshirt David Alexander because if anybody needs to come in and play for any of these guys, looks like Eric Barnes is up to the test. So we could save Alexander a year, we could save Edmonds a year, and we'll save Carter a year. At linebacker, Victor Thompson's not going to play. We got Hall, we got Cutler ready to go, so he's going to redshirt. Same with Jenkins. We'll redshirt him. I think the game was correct in that. We'll redshirt him, Bracken, and Jenkins. We're too deep there, too deep at Mike. If anybody's got to unredshirt, Dukes will be the first guy to unredshirt. At corner, we're a little thin here. We got six guys. Don't think we need six, so we'll give Williamson the red shirt. And then John Gray, the incoming, very talented freshman at strong safety, will get a red shirt as well. Lorenzo Jackson and Trevor Fisher will have to hold it down for us there. Here's one that we do have to do, actually. Uh, I want to change our slot receiver to a quicker guy. And Alex Williams was really good in the slot last year. He had some clutch catches for us. He's probably the quickest guy we have from a speed and acceleration standpoint. So we'll give him the nod at slot receiver for the season. How about this, man? We moved this Silva kid from outside linebacker to defensive end, and he's going to be our starting defensive end on the left side. That was a great move. He's 90 overall, man. That might that might pay dividends for us this year. All right, we do have to make decisions on kick return or punt returner. Really, there's no decision that needs to be made. It's going to be Roman McCutcheon again. He's been doing it for the past couple seasons. He's won the Jet Award multiple times. That's a very easy decision there. All right, now comes the interesting part. We got to set up our custom schedule. So I think we play 10 conference games usually, so we have to change a couple of things. Let's see what we can do. All right, so we went through and changed a couple of things. They had us play in Notre Dame week two. We played them last year. We beat them. So I think I'm off the Notre Dame train. You know, we had to get our revenge against them. We did. I want to schedule Boston College because I think they won the national championship last season and we used to run them when we were in the ACC. The only reason why we can't anymore is because we're not in the conference, we're in the SEC. So we're scheduling them at home, the defending national champs, 
as a marquee game and a chance to prove that just because we don't play in the same conference as them anymore doesn't mean we still dominate and own them. And then I wanted to try to schedule our former dynasty team, Oregon State. I try to play them every year. I'm going to roll the dice and say that we'll play them in the college football playoff because I think we're making the college football playoff, obviously. And I'm scheduling Army West Point the final week of the season. We played them at home last year, two years ago, I think. And I think they won the national championship that season. So we're playing both of the national champions from the past two years. And we're going to play at their house this time instead of hosting them. And why I'm doing this is because I have a very sneaky suspicion they're going to be in the top five when it comes to the final weeks of the regular season. They usually are. This is our chance if we suffer a loss to knock them out and push ourselves back into the field to make the college football playoff. Or if we're both kind of in contention for it to knock them out and really just kind of have that as a bargaining chip, if you will, if we're in a situation where we need to beat a team or get a marquee signature resume building win to make the college football play. So we got BC, Army, both top four teams. Those are our two non-conference games. And we got 10 SEC games. Here's a look at what we got. So we open up with Missouri at home, and then we got BC. And then two back-to-back -back road games against Florida and Ole Miss. And then we got home games against Tennessee and Arkansas, both top 25 teams. A road trip to Alabama. And then we host Auburn, so both of the Iron Bowl teams. By week, right in the middle of the season, I like that. Come back out of that, travel to Starkville to play Mississippi State, another bye week. And then we got a home matchup with Texas A&M. That game is circled. They're not a top 10 team, but they've beaten us, I think, the what, the past two seasons? We haven't beaten them yet since we've been in the SEC with Georgia Tech. And we finish things out with a road trip to Death Valley to play LSU. And then a road trip against Army West Point up in New York. It's going to be very chilly and cold. So that's an A-plus strength of schedule. So many top 25 teams. we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven top 25 teams. Not to mention road trips to Oxford, Tuscaloosa, Starkville, and Death Valley. Some of the premier college football locations. So this is one heck of a schedule. SEC is a gauntlet, and we've added two top four teams, two preseason playoff teams in the non-conference. So it's going to be a tough year, but we play a tough schedule every year, and I think this team is built for it. So let's go. All right, starting in recruiting, we don't have any team needs. It says on offense, we just need a kicker because uh, Kellen Johnson is a senior. But in terms of position groups, it says we don't need any. Of course, we're going to not adhere by that and go after a lot of guys. And the same for defense, actually. We don't need anybody on defense uh, except a punter. But of course, we're going to go and try to upgrade and make our team better at every position. So let's go. All right, let's go through and do some scouting. Got to hit the specialist first because that's the most pressing need for us moving forward. Justin Watson looks like a solid punter. We picked up a few kickers. They all should be really good. Wouldn't mind getting any of them. Yeah, great. All 78 and above. So as long as we get one, we're chilling there. All right, corner, we're looking a little thin, if I remember correctly, so we definitely got to bring in one of these guys. Uh, if not, we're going to have to go find another one because they're not the highest overall guys. So let's see. All right, Rob Walker, 6'1", not the fastest, but I like his coverage. He's 82 in man, 79 in zone. He's got good jumping, really good tackler as well, so pretty solid all around. Alex Ratliff is a little bit short, so he's got to have some good speed for me. And it's not great, and he's not a great tackler. He's good in coverage, good jumper, just doesn't have the acceleration. So we'll leave him on the board, but not going after him extremely hard. We're getting a little old at running back, so let's see if we can find our next crop. He's good. Greg Howard, 6-0 from Kentucky, 93 speed, 83 excel. Good break tackling ability, decent catcher, good juke movies, solid. Oh, we got a gem, Ken Walker, 75 overall from I think he was like 68, something like that. 60197, not the fastest guy, balanced 85, 84. Good juke move, good elusiveness, pretty decent catching as well, so definitely something to like there. Brent Wright, pretty good too. All these guys are pretty similar. I kind of, we've yet to find that running back that's like 93 speed, 92 excel, and just looks like a dog. But, uh, 
you know, these guys are all pretty solid. Wrights, 88, 84, and, and much like the other guys, good juke, good elusiveness, good catching. So three players that'll need some time to get better, but uh, good raw abilities. We might be losing both of our tight ends this offseason, so we definitely got to bring one in. David McDonald looks promising. He's pretty good, slower, pretty good blocker. Not the highest overall dude, definitely not a four-star, but we'll come back to him. Got to keep recruiting D-tackle and D-end well, so let's see what we got here. Yeah, Nick Baker is that guy. 81 overall, 6'1", 292, 85 power move, 87 finesse, 79 block shed, 83 tackle, so like lights out there, 83 pursuits, recognizes plays well, 81 strength. Lots to like about Nick Baker. He is a stud, probably the best guy we have on the board so far. Sean Leonard, same, good moves, good block shed, good tackling, good strength. So Sean Leonard, Nick Baker, two for sure go-to guys there at D-Tackle. How about DM? We got some dogs on the board right here. Let's see if they live up to the hype. Lee Neal does. Good speed and excel, excellent movement, great tackle. He's a five-star, and his attributes match that ranking for sure. We got a gem, Pat Grant moves up five overall ticks, 78, 88 speed excel, great tackle, great movement, great block shed. Defensive line looking great on the board so far. We got two potent options there in Grant and Neal. Adam Gunn, good as well. Four star, definitely looks like a four star. His finesse moves lacking a little bit. But his shed and power moves are great, and his tackling numbers are off the charts. So, man, DN is looking stacked. I would love to just get even one of these guys. Let's see. Martin Banks, he'll probably... He's probably going to get cut. He's not fast enough, but he is 6'5", so he's got that going for him. Just uh, the tackling's not great, and the moves are pretty good. A little bit lower. So we'll leave him on. He'll be like our low-choice guy if we can't get the high-choice guy. All right, defensive tackles, great. Um, defensive ends looking great. Outside linebacker, we're a little bit old there. We're losing probably two guys to the professional league after the season. So we got to bring in one or two of these guys to re rekindle, restack, if you will. Jesse Douglas is the guy. He's going to be the guy at outside linebacker. We got to put all of our chips in for him. Gem plus six. Look at the speed, 81, 85, 79 strength, 75 block shed. That's better than some defensive ends and defensive tackles, man. That is unbelievable. So he's going to be our number one prospect, the linebacker. Dwayne Harvey looks good as well, 80, 87, 79 strength, excellent tackler, good block shed, good movement. So, man, defense is looking great on this recruiting board. I'm excited about this. Uh, DJ Hall, he's not even bad, 6'3", 216 from Ohio. Decent tackler, pretty good in coverage. It's just his uh, movement's not good, but all I need him to do is get off blocks and make tackles, and it looks like he can do that, and he's pretty quick, so I wouldn't even mind bringing him in. All right, something I didn't even mention there uh, in the preseason is the fact that we're the preseason number one team. I want to say we were preseason number one before at some point, maybe back in the ACC days. Last season, I think we came in at number 15, so we started pretty low, but worked our way up and were number one, but then we lost to A&M, and we tumbled down far and ultimately too far because we couldn't make it back into the top four and make the college football playoff, not even at the end of the season after the bowl game. So, But here we are, week one of the 2031 season, home game against Missouri, starting SEC play week one. Should be a lot of fun. So that's what we got when we come back. We'll do recruiting, all conference, all SEC, other stuff like that that we always take care of. I'm going to change the sliders a little bit. Uh, to make the game a little bit more enjoyable based on some of the comments you guys have shared. Just trying to cater to what you like to you know, see and watch on this channel. And I also spent a couple hours last weekend updating the game to the latest version. You'll see the updates when we actually play the game. New scoreboard, new lighting, different things like that. Maybe some new uniforms to use with maybe my team and some other teams. So certainly want to check back for that first game. Should be a lot of fun. Can't wait to open the season. Step one of hopefully step 15 of making and winning the national championship. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Check out all the other content on my channel, the Georgia Tech Dynasty right here, the Oregon State Dynasty, every other video I've made. I made a lot of content on NCAA 14, college football revamped. 
all there for you at your convenience to watch and hopefully enjoy. So check back next episode, game one against the Tigers. Let's take care of business. Thanks for watching. Peace out.